Today you join me on a hunt for the Celts. Just what is a Celt? Many people have very clear ideas. They wear blue body paint. Celts have long red flowing hair. They drink a lot and wear strange clothes such as kilts. The Celts are tough people who play rugby and have access to ancient forgotten wisdom. And they live in a very particular fringe part of the British Isles and some other places in Europe. I am an extremely proud modern Welshman, but I'd never call myself a Celt. And that's partly because the Celts didn't really exist. Arguably, the popular idea of Celts stemmed from the writings of Julius Caesar. When he travelled north into Europe, he wrote dispatches for the people of Rome, though he did not observe a single Celtic identity. Gallia is in whole divided in three parts, from which one inhabit the Belgae, the other the Aquitanii, and the third those who in their own language call themselves Celtae, in ours Gali. Indeed, when the Romans came to Britain, the people they met here called themselves Britons, not Celts, hence the Roman province Britannia and the later name Britain. Despite this, there was a popular notion in the Roman world that those to the north were all kind of the same. Picts, Britons, Germans, Celts, what's the difference? They're all not Roman and they're all uncivilised. It is true that the people of Northern Europe vexed the Romans. For example, they had women leaders. Often, these people wore trousers. This was very strange to the Roman mind. These Northern Europeans lived in wooden houses, not towns. They drank their wine undiluted, very uncivilised. These characteristics provided stereotypes for some orators to rail against. And it is true that there were occasionally tensions between these cultures. However, all of these Northern Europeans came from different tribes, with different dress codes, different allegiances, different attitudes to the world. And across Europe, these differences were even more marked. In other words, there was no single unified Celtic identity or Celtic empire. It just didn't exist. This is where the concept of Celticism or Celticism plays a very important role, the modern idea of Iron Age Europe. In the latter 19th century in Britain, there was something of a Celtic revival, driven not least by Queen Victoria holidaying in Balmoral. Everybody wanted to be part of this fashionable new trend towards the Celts. Scholars looked back to the writings of Tacitus and Caesar and plucked from the mists of time concepts such as Druids and Picts. They assigned this cultural block to the funny-speaking people on the fringes of the British Isles and brought this culture bang up to date with the latest fashion styles. Anyone who was anyone wanted to be seen in a kilt. The early Irish medieval text, The Torn, was used as a model for Celtic society. However, this was written down in the 11th century, the time of the Normans, and was meant to represent people living in the Iron Age. This is exactly like reading about modern-day London in an effort to learn about King Henry VIII in Tudor England. It just doesn't work. Many people look to physical attributes to confirm their Celticness. Red hair, for example. I had stunningly red hair as a child, but this doesn't mean I'm Celtic. Iron Age people in Europe had a variety of hair colours, and often it would be lime-washed anyway, so a Roman writer couldn't possibly know the original colour. In other words, there's no single genetic marker for Celtic ancestry. Red hair is a red herring. A study published this week in the journal Nature showed, to the researcher's surprise, that the so-called Celtic fringe of Britain does not share common DNA. They are distinct groups in Cornwall, Wales, both North and South, Northern Ireland and Scotland. Note this doesn't make them distinct peoples or races, rather they have been historically isolated and have developed unique markers in their junk DNA. So, what does the word Celtic mean in the modern world? Celtic probably best refers to a group of languages or artistic styles. So the question is, Do you speak Welsh? If the answer to this is yes, or yes to another Celtic language, then yes, you're likely to come from what is now known as the Celtic Fringe. 
But it's worthwhile remembering that language exists quite separate from our genes. I may know Welsh, but it doesn't mean I have one single ancestral lineage leading inevitably and only back to an Iron Age tribe. I'm certainly not one of the Celts, because the Celts don't exist. The Celts are a conglomerate of many different people, and a modern-day invention. A romanticised view of the past, and to a certain extent a cartoon character created by some in the ancient world. I know this is an emotive subject for many, but I'd rather be a modern, proud Welshman with a complex and not easily definable ancestry than someone else's cartoon character. It is by embracing this that we can move beyond the stereotypes and understand something of the complex and varied peoples of Iron Age Europe.